So we'll now go to a leapfrog model and look at the three-dimensional orientation of the various host rocks and how the mineralization is understood in three dimensions at Sunday Creek. So starting out at the regional level, so we this will be running and you'll be able to see the scale here in the lower right and the view at any stage. So if you're uncertain as to which way you're looking or what the scale is, please check the lower right of the screen. So starting out at the soil survey, we discussed, we discussed across the 11 kilometers from the southwest to the northeast corner. You can see the red here indicating anomalous gold results in soils that dominated by this area down in the southwest corner, Leviathan and out into the intersection with the Reedy Creek trend out in the northeast. So we're going to focus in this leapfrog model down in the southwest corner here. And at the moment we have the LIDAR data turned on and we will turn that on and off as we go. So we have um, workings across the area that uh, started in the 1800s, late 1800s and went through to the 1900s. And then there were two phases of uh, RC and diamond drilling in the 1980s and 1990s. There are drives and old workings under the surface that we have mapped into our 3D model. But you can see here in the LIDAR, the detail of some of these workings uh, across Golden Dyke in the Western area, going through into this Eastern so-called Gladys and Apollo zones. So if we turn off the topography now and start to look, we will see that we'll go into cross section in one area here and just zoom in and you can see the scale of the workings here underground. And there are many, many mineralized shoots untested here within this system. So Golden Dyke in the southwest portion of this prospect area um, is over 180 meters deep, and there's more than 20 vein, separate vein systems recorded within here. And there's lots of fantastic notes and wonderful grades uh, within this. So going back to the view from the surface, so a plan view again, and moving across to the east, you can see the underground workings over here. And if we zoom into a cross section, you can see the workings at the Apollo mine, various levels and different vein systems recorded by the workings underground. Not as deep here as Golden Dyke, but uh, significant nonetheless. So we're going, now going to look at what drilling we've conducted here and have a discussion on the grades of drilling that we see and look at the combination of the rock types, the grade, the alteration, and try and understand in three dimensions how this system actually works. And it might look like there's lots of drilling here, but there's actually lots and lots of open space. These veins are high grade, continuous, and have a good plunge extent. And we have them, there is no closure to the veins at depth, or out to the northeast or out to the northwest uh, by our drilling. So the first thing to do might be to take a simple cross section across some of the better intersections that we've made in the deposit. So we're gonna take a cross section here, looking from the southwest to the northeast and look at some of our drill intersections. Now on here, we will mark, put the topography back on so you will see the surface. So a line up here for the topography near the surface. And this here is the base of oxidation is marked on here. Now we're going to show you initially some of the gold grades, and we might just stick to some of the very higher grades above two grams just to show you the continuity so if we take our view now, we're looking out to the northwest, hole number 33 here, high grade intersection of over 100 meters, recorded 
within this section. But what you see here is great continuity down to the northeast and no drilling here to close it out. Now it's slightly more complicated than it looks in this simple cross section because there are different components that drive the precipitation as we discovered before. There are dike rocks and they are mapped here in green. But if we rotate the image around and look at the slices, you will see that most of the mineralization actually occurs within these dike rocks. And the reason for that we discussed earlier was associated with the, both the rheology, in other words, the dikes are able to fracture, the dikes and the surrounding alteration are able to fracture open and produce veins, and the presence of iron carbonate alteration. So the dike is a great marker unit for where the mineralization actually might exist. So if we go back to the surface and have a look at the very highest grades, so we'll just go back and we'll, instead of looking at just two grams, we'll go back and look at everything above five grams. And if we rotate our model and look down in the dike, you will start to see there are trends of very high grade continuous mineralization that extends down in what you might call shoots. So there are a number of mineralized plunging shoots here, dipping at around 70 degrees out to the north northeast. And those are controlled by the intersection of dike in this direction and a series of veins that are subvertical and another series of veins that actually dip towards the southwest. So these are the gold carbonate bearing veins and the gold stibnite bearing veins. And these all lie in with these within these chutes that are continuous at depth and require somewhat specialized targeting. So you can miss them, but uh, when you get on them, such as in hold number 33, the grades are spectacular and can be over a hundred meters thick in the drill hole. Let's go back to a cross section and just look at these high grade results again. We'll look at everything above two grams. And this is where you see the continuity. Not only is there continuity in the dip orientation, if we actually take a slice down the mineralization and now look onto this surface from the right hand side here, you start to see how these mineralized shoots exist in the ground and are continuous in their plunge. So when I say plunge, that is because they're starting to become more linear because of the intersection of the two planes. But there are multiple vein systems, and this is just one of them that we are testing at the moment. And you can see here that as you go deeper down, obviously they're slightly harder to hit, but there's a big void in here in between drill holes where if we put a marker on here, and show the continuation of grade, it is in this orientation. So an obvious place to test in the future would be places like this, down plunge associated with the intersection of the vein systems and the host rocks. And you can see up here, just circled up here, some of the workings, and they are directly associated with the shallower parts of the system that we're now drilling. So before we move on to antimony grades, just a reminder about the scale of these systems. So we can put the ruler on here. So the surface, so going from the surface, so we're down to 260 meters, for example, in this intersection. It's important again to note that there is nothing about this system that says it stops. Now, at the moment, we have our gold plotted up in this view. So at the moment, we're actually looking in an unusual view. So we'll go back to the surface and we'll draw another cross section. And then we'll come in and look at the antimony grades. So we'll draw our cross section like this. And we'll change now from gold to antimony. And we're going to start at, look at, just look at the higher grade material. 
And you will see this is an almost repeat of what you saw in the gold grades. So there is a spatial, almost one-to-one -one correlation of antimony and gold in these systems. So this is one of the multiple vein systems. So how many of these are there in this system? Well, you can rotate the view back up to a cross section and stand back and look at all our drilling. So we're going to now look in a cross section and we'll look at gold again. We'll go back to gold and we'll look at everything above 0.3 grams per tonne. And you'll actually see here that you can divide up these into different vein sets. And so if you start to look here, you can actually correlate from one vein to another in certain views. So if we take a new cross section and decided to look at how these vein sets might work, you can rotate this around and you can actually see there's one, two, three, four at least different vein sets within this system. And we've really only concentrated on one of them, although that we're very fortunate that in hole number 33, these vein sets become quite close. And that's likely to be a function of the relationship of the structural geology and the reactive host rocks. So stepping out and looking at all our vein systems that we've intersected so far. So we have, as we said, we've concentrated on one here across at Apollo, but then there are others out towards the west. So there's the area we discussed right at the start known as Golden Dyke. And we only have a couple of our drill holes in here and a couple of earlier RC drill holes by other people. But we have not tested underneath here at all. And just remember, this is the biggest producer with some of the best veins. But as we started to understand Apollo first, we stuck with that vein system and we'll gradually move across and move into these other vein systems that form part of the Sunday Creek mineralization, which even at the prospect scale here has about a two kilometer stride length from an early prospect and shaft known as Christina across to Apollo. There are lots of spaces in this part of the, part of the system, in particular because the vein systems intersect with reactive rocks and produce these mineralized shoots which have no depth limitation and probably have a strike limitation of maybe 30 to 50 meters, but are continuous um, to depth. So going back to a long east-west section of the overall prospect area from Golden Dyke in the west to Apollo in the east, significant width of View here, 750 metres of mineralised rocks. You can see the scale in the lower corner here on the right. So we have been discussing the shallower drilled material, but its significance is the deeper holes on the prospect. So hole number 26 here, drilled 430 metres from the surface vertically, or near vertically, and that mineralization included an intersection of 5.6 meters at 10.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent, including 0.9 at 52 grams. And an adjacent hole to that, hole number 25 here, included 11.7 meters at 18 grams per tonne, including four meters at 46.7. And across in a completely different vein system, that is very poorly known at this system. So we're moving 330 metres across to the west. Hole number 21 intersected 21.7 metres at 6.2 grams per tonne gold equivalent, including 0.4 at 177. Now, significantly, these depths are not the limit to gold mineralisation. We have near surface 
uh, gold antimony mineralization. And we know from places including Fosterville and Costafield that the gold rich parts of these systems can exist for many, many hundreds of meters below the levels that we've drilled so far. So looking in summary at what we've seen in our area, and we'll draw a couple of sketches here, we have a number of vein systems near surface. We have some known vein systems at depth here that have continuity sub vertically like this. There is another vein set central region and then a number and remember we said there was at least 20 or so different vein sets mapped across in the western part of the area. So here we have over 750 meters of mineralized vein sets that have no depth extent in terms of being drilled out at this stage and great continuity in terms of things like the dike host rocks. They continue as far as we know at this stage, there is no evidence for closing, closing out of the host, mineral, host rocks to the mineralization. So final summary, number of veins, high grade, no limits to depth continuity, and a lot more drilling to be done to find significant intersections at depth. And in addition to areas near the surface that haven't been tested at all. So in summary, the prospect area over a kilometre here of strike length of pits and workings with our testing of a couple of veins here in the eastern side right, around the Apollo system. So very high grade continuous and other high grade intersections from our drilling throughout this region that require follow up. And just stepping back to the regional picture, there is 10 kilometres out to the northeast. And you'll remember from the soils data out to the northeast. So not only in the soils do we see the anomalies, but we actually know there's previous workings out here, right out to the northeast. So we have soils points like that, and we can actually grid them and see an image of where these points actually intersect known mineralization. So there are known workings at Leviathan and then out here to the northeast you can see considerable mineralization that is untested by drilling as part of the Reedy Creek trend. So in summary, great start, wonderful grades and lots more to do in terms of intersections with drilling. What we've just been through covered off our project work over the last two years but, uh, and you'll understand from the relationship between the minerals in the ground, the structural geology, the dike host rock to the mineralization, it has lots and lots of upside. I'd like you to take away from this video an understanding of how our system works and how it relates to the other projects in the Victorian area. So where are we going from here? Well, you'll understand from this video that there's a number of veins, they are continuous to depth and we have not tested them. But not only are there a number of veins, there's actually an 11 kilometre system that remains untested from the southwest of our project area up to the northeast of Sunday Creek where it intersects with the Reedy Creek Gold Trend. This is an amazing project to be working on. The grades and the continuity uh, in the drill holes is exciting. And we know from other Victorian projects what the upside potential actually is. So to be involved in a project here where great gold grades and great stibnite grades or antimony grades are coming out of the ground on a regular basis is, I suppose, every geologist's dream. So I look forward to reporting back to you with uh, more great results. Thank you very much.